Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a update for my eyeshadow roulette. So if you don't know what that is, I am basically kind of mimicking the Pamela's eyeshadows idea of pulling random eyeshadows in, but I am replacing them every month. I don't hold on to them until I hit pan or until I hit a certain use goal. I just like to kind of rotate through my collection, find different shades that maybe I'm not normally drawn to. I try to use them like at least five times each, but there's no pressure and each month we roll in and out new shadows. So I have a whole playlist if that's something that you want to like binge watch or, you know, watch my, you know, episodes as they go, I guess. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and begin. I'm going to start by talking about the shades that I had in this past month. Then we'll talk about any updates to my collection, if I have new eyeshadow in, if I have pan on anything, my pan percentage, all that fun stuff. Then we're going to roll in four new shades, and then I'm going to put all four of the new shades on my eyes. So I don't have any eye makeup on yet, but that's going to be the plan for this video. So the four shades that I pulled last month weren't ones that I was like overly excited about they were just okay if you know what I mean so I have a couple of them in this little z palette that I've been into making especially when I pull color pop shadows because they're magnetic and so they pop out really easily I like to have a little you know z palette action going on so um, I'm going to start with my two color pop shades and then the other two came from my sultry palette so the two from here um, are these two the brown and kind of the orange so this brown is called Velveteen. It's from the ColourPop Bare Necessities palette, which is a big like 30 pan eyeshadow palette. And it's a really pretty brown. Um, you know, I would use this with a very light fluffy brush and just kind of add dimension into my um, like crease and stuff like that. I mean, it wasn't anything that I used like all over the lid or did something crazy with. It's just not how I use a shade like this, but it wasn't deep enough for me to use as a liner either. So I just kind of rolled with it. Um, I did end up using this eight times. Um, again, it's just a brown, so I was easy to use in my crease. It didn't really matter what um, lid shade I was gonna go for, as long as it was kind of neutral based, it worked. The other one in here, kind of this more red toned matte shade. This is also from the Bare Necessities palette and this is called Haute. And I've had actually both of these rolled in before. Um, so this is a swatch of it here. This one, again, I would use in the same way. I would use like a fluffy brush to kind of buff it into the crease, maybe onto the eyelid a little bit more than the brown. But this worked well. It definitely adds like a warmth to the eyes. Um, it definitely, like can quickly pull orange and red, like I definitely have to be very, very light with it. I ended up using Hope five times this past month um, and it's pretty, but I'm usually more drawn to a shade like that in the fall. So it just didn't really feel super seasonally appropriate, but I was able to incorporate it, you know, on a few looks. So I would say that's good. The other two shades I had in were from my Anastasia Sultry palette, which I am panning a few shades from in here in my project pan as well. So it worked out that I was going to have this palette open most days anyway. So the two shades that I had, the first one is Ember, which is this one right here. And Ember looks different in the pan than what it does on my eyes and my skin. So in the pan, I would say it looks very kind of dark and grungy. I um, mean, it is a shimmer shade, but when I swatch it out and when I apply it to my lids, it's not as dark. Um, so if that's right there. I use this a lot in the outer third of my lid, but I'd also use it all over the lid um, and put like a champagne or a gold over it to kind of lighten it up. So it kind of is like an olive brown, I would say. Like it's it's definitely not just brown, it's not just green, it's kind of like a mix in between, and I really like it, but again, it looks way darker in the pan, at least to me, um, than it does on my skin, which is good, because now I've realized it's not that scary of a shade to work on, you know what I mean? Like, it's more user-friendly than I would have anticipated just looking at this palette. I might have been a little bit more timid to use it. The other shade in here that I rolled in is Slate, which is this matte gray. And I have to tell you, this is a difficult shade for me to use. Um, I used it in my crease. It just definitely builds fast. And I wouldn't say it's like the smoothest matte formula I've ever used. Um, it definitely can be kind of like skippy and it definitely sticks to some areas of my lid like more than others. So it's hard for me to blend out because once it was there, 
Like I really had to work at it. So it wasn't my favorite shade. I did use it on the lower lash line a couple of times and I just like very, very lightly dust it on my eyes. But I can't say that slate is a favorite. It just, uh, it's, it's a lot. I guess in the swatch, you know, it kind of pulls more like cool toned gray purple than like a true gray, which was nice. I like that it pulled that way, but it's just, it was a hard one for me to use. So I ended up, I guess I didn't say I used Ember six times, which is that olive brown. And then I used Slate five times. So just kind of got my five and put it to the side pretty much. But that's okay. That's what sometimes happens, you know? So yeah, these were the four shades. Like I said, they're fine. They just weren't anything I was super excited about this past month. So I'm hoping this month I get a couple of shades that I'm just really more into and wanting to play with some more than, you know, these ones. Um, let's talk about my eyeshadow collection. So I did bring in a new eyeshadow palette. I was gifted an eyeshadow palette. Um, and so that was the ColourPop That's Taupe palette. So this is a nine pan ColourPop palette. I'm really, really enjoying it. I've been using it all month. Um, so there's nine shades in here. One of them, this one is a super shock, um, which I really like. I've been using this one a lot actually. But so I did bring in nine more shades into my collection. So I previously had 81 eyeshadows and now I have a clean 90. Um, I really would not like that to go over 100. I just don't feel like I need 100 eyeshadows. I should say I include all of my eyeshadows. So if they're in a palette, if they're a single, a cream eyeshadow, they're all on the spreadsheet. Um, so yeah, I'm up to 90 now, which is okay. Like I said, I don't really want that to go over 100. So I either need to like finish up shades or, you know, declutter or something. But right now I feel really content. I kind of want to be on a no buy for eyeshadow for, I don't know, probably at least like four or five months maybe. I could see myself buying a limited edition eyeshadow palette like around the holiday season if one really screams my name. But otherwise I feel like, you know, like anything new would probably be a duplicate at this point. Like I have something very cool. I have very warm eyeshadows. I just, I don't know. There's a lot of beautiful palettes, don't get me wrong, but I just, I don't know. So I'm gonna try to not buy anything for a couple of months at least. Um, but I did hit pan on one eyeshadow, a bonus pan. So I want to share that with you because that's always exciting. And I hit pan in my e.l.f. Bite Size Quad. Uh, this is the Cream and Sugar. And I hit pan on the first shade in here. Um, this was in my project pan, and I ended up using this as a shade to set my like primer down with because I do enjoy doing that. Um, I'm kind of working through all of the shades in my collection that would fit that role of setting my primer, and I'm trying to hit pan on all of them, and I'm going to circle back around to actually finish them up. So that was in my project pan, and I did hit pan, so now I have nine eyeshadows in my collection with pan, which makes for easy math this month because nine eyeshadows out of 90 is 10%. So 10% of my collection has pan, which I am so, so proud of myself for. I never thought that I would like hit a double digit, <laughs> but that's really exciting. I don't have a goal for the pan percentage right now. This year, I just kind of want to see where I get. I've, I've pan palettes in the past, um, but this year, I'm really enjoying just switching up my basket and feeling like I'm using my whole collection because sometimes when you pan a palette you neglect everything else because you're so hyper focused and I'm just trying to share the love a little bit more. Okay so I'm going to wipe off my hand here and then we're going to roll in four new shades for the month of June. Okay so before I roll which I do have my app all set up um, I do have a few instances where I would re-roll. So the four shades that I just used in May, I have them marked on my spreadsheet that if I roll them, I'm going to re-roll because I want a month off before I use them again. You know, I just used them. They weren't my favorite. So I do have them marked. And if I roll one of those, I'm going to re-roll. I also have in my spreadsheet the shades that I am working on in my project pan flagged as well because I don't... I don't want to like double dip. I'd rather have more shadows to play with throughout the month instead of, you know, like two of them being in this project and my project pan, if that makes sense. So I could re-roll. It's like too much work to take them out and put them back in because those things change so frequently. Um, but I do have them all flagged here. I'm looking to double check. Uh, yep. So let's go ahead and roll. We're going to roll four shades. I have a header in my spreadsheet. So I'm going from two to 91. 
and um, we want to prevent the rerolls. And let's go ahead and start. So we got 90, 65, 23, and 26. So let me just have a second here to check my spreadsheet to see if we have any rerolls, and we'll go from there. Okay, I am excited. All of those shades worked. I don't have to do any rerolls, and it came from four different palettes, which is kind of fun. So let's start at the first one, which was shade number 90. And I should say my spreadsheet is in alphabetical order because I do have this ColourPop Bare Necessities palette. That's a 30 pan eyeshadow palette. And so before when I had a whole block of 30, I felt like I was getting this every single time. Whereas when I have it alphabetical, I just feel like there's a better chance that it's not just like a block, you know, 30 lines in a row of getting the same thing. Like obviously it's still the same percentage, but you know what I mean. So anyway, the first one came from my ColourPop Wild Nothing palette, which I was actually just thinking about pulling out anyway to use through the month of June. This is what it looks like. So it's a really pretty kind of summery palette. There are two Super Shock shades in it, um, and I've already hit pan on that cream shade, so just really like this. Um, okay, so the shade that I got is called Vagabond, which is this one down here. So it's like a nice matte, I don't know, crease shade, I guess. Let's do a swatch here. So it's kind of like a warm brown peach. Like, I really like that. I think that's going to be so easy to just throw in the crease. I mean, I definitely could like add more, like another shade to deepen up, but I feel like on its own, that's going to be really pretty. So we've got Vagabond there, and I'll probably just keep it in this palette so I reach for this palette all month, you know? Okay, the next one I got was shade 65, which comes from my ZC Alice in Wonderland palette. I got this a couple months ago, used it. This is such a fun like packaging. It's got glitter in it that, you know, comes down. Ugh, it's so pretty. I never heard of ZC before, but I think it's, um, I believe it's a Chinese brand. It's beautiful. So this is what the palette looks like. I'm going upside down just because the mirror is so big. <laughs> so these are the shades. I'm not counting the blushes in here. And it said shade is seven, which if I go across, you know, we have like four. So five, six, seven. So it's this brown one here, which is a matte. There's only a couple mattes in here. So let's get that swatched. Okay, so it's kind of similar to that Vagabond. I'm not sure if you guys can tell on the swatch there, but I definitely think that the ZC one is like more orangey. Um, so I think that I could use these kind of interchangeably probably. I don't know if I'd pair them together all the time because now looking at it, the Vagabond looks a little bit more pinky peach, but still, hey, that's fine. I'm okay with it. Okay, so we've got Alice in Wonderland going. The next one I had rolled in was shade uh, 23, which does come from my ColourPop Bare Necessities, and it's the shade called Designer Duds, which is really pretty. It's like kind of in the middle here, so it's this one right here, and it is a shimmer, and I do have a couple of, you know, shades pulled out of here still. Um, so let's get a swatch of that. This one I probably will pull out to um, put in the Z palette. I'll probably pick a couple of other shades too, but that's really pretty. Like it's kind of a rosy brown shimmer. I like that. I think that's going to pair nicely with either of the um, mattes I just pulled. Okay. And then the last one I pulled is from my ABH Soft Glam 2 palette. So this is like the mini of the Soft Glam, which I totally recommend getting. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome travel palette. And I got the shade Dusty Rose, which is a matte kind of like purpley mauve. Um, I've worked with this shade a lot. I have a single of it too, so I know I like it. <laughs> and this one definitely is like the most cool tone of the four I have here. But I'm really happy with this quad because it's so soft and I feel like these, these mattes 
are a lot different than the mattes that I had last month. Like last month they seemed so dark and heavy, but these are all pretty light. Like ones that I could just do a wash of color with. I can put them in the crease. I can use, I only have the one shimmer, which opens it up to me using like any kind of shimmer. And the Alice in Wonderland palette has a ton. I mean, there's only two matte shadows. The rest of these are shimmers. Well, nothing has a bunch of shimmers. So I'm excited for this. I'm definitely looking forward to it. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put all four of these on my eyeballs, which um, I feel like I'm just going to be layering up these mattes pretty much, which might be cheating, but maybe I'll put like one of them on my lower lash line. So my envision is to use like, I don't know, maybe I'll use like this one and this one in my crease, the shimmer all over the lid, and then the other one on my lower lash line. I'll probably add one more shimmer in there just to have like a gradient. But that's kind of what I'm thinking my plan is. So I have my um, stuff here and I am going to just go ahead and begin. We're going to speed through this process. So um, I'll talk a little bit, but we're also going to speed through. So here we go. Okay, I am going to use um, the matte shadow that I'm panning right now in my project pan to set down my um, primer. All right, so for my crease, I'm gonna start with the Wild Nothing Vagabond, um, which again is this one down here, and I'm gonna go in with a fluffy brush, but maybe a little bit more of a denser fluffy brush um, to begin, so we'll see where this takes us. Okay, so we have that started. I think that looks really pretty so far. Okay, so what I like to do next is use the Dusty Mauve to kind of deepen the crease a little bit. I don't wanna go overboard, um, so I'm just gonna grab a different fluffier brush. This one is like less dense, and I'm gonna hold it at the very end. I learned this tip a long time ago. I don't even remember from who, but um, to blend like very lightly, you wanna put the pressure on your brush towards the end instead of like up here where you have more pressure. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm kind of brushing it onto my lid a little bit too to add some depth in that outer corner. All right, so this is what we are looking like so far. I'm going to add in my lid shade next, which is from the Bare Necessities, and it's this Designer Duds, and I am going to use a brush with it um, at first, and then I might build it up with my finger. We'll see, see how it looks. Okay, I think I'm gonna wet my brush just to add a little bit more of like a foiled impact look, but so far I am liking it. I put it all over the lid on both eyes. Okay, so this is what it's looking like, and I'm just gonna grab the brush that I used with um, Dusty Ma or Dusty Rose, I'm sorry. I'm not gonna put any product in it, I'm just gonna use it to kind of blend out the crease a little bit more now. I don't think I want any eyeliner today. Um, I want to kind of keep it, I don't know, a little bit lighter. Sometimes I feel like eyeliner can just look a little heavy. So I'm going to do no eyeliner today. So I'm going to put on my mascara and then we're going to work on the lower lash line. Um, the mascara that I'm using right now is the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Uncensored. I do prefer the regular Exhibitionist more than the Uncensored, but the Uncensored is you know, fine. Okay, so 
we are going to look at the lower lash line. So I still need to use this matte brown from ZC. So I'm going to start with that, but I think I might layer it up. So I'm just going to grab on a flat brush. Um, I got this off of Amazon. It's from the brand Ben Lilly, but it's a great under like lower lash line flat brush. I can't use pencil brushes. I always like, poke myself in the eye. <laughs> so I have some on my um, brush here and I'm just going to start to kind of drag it through the lower lashes very lightly, focusing on the outer bit. So it looks a little something like that. So let me get more product and do the other side. Okay. And then I'm gonna grab in this palette, I have this kind of like shimmery shade, like a gold champagne called Dreamer. I'm gonna grab that and put it on the first half of my inner corner um, and lower lash line to kind of brighten up the area. Okay, I ended up putting it on a little bit on my actual eyelid too, but that's going to be the completed look. So I'm going to give you a little close-up, I guess. Um, I like it, you know? They're all easy shades for me to use and incorporate. I feel, I feel like the shimmer that I used on my lid is going to be like a good, easy go-to. Um, it definitely can pull peach or rose, which is nice to have kind of that option. So I think this is going to be an easy month for me. I'm really excited. I'm happy that the kind of tones of this isn't too dark. It's not too light. It's not like I got all golds or something, um, which I am reaching for, but it's nice to have this kind of variety. So I'm super excited about it. Um, I'm going to mark that I've used each of these shades once now because I put them all in my eyes. And I'll check in with you guys in my next update in a month. So let me know if you're doing something similar to this so I can check it out. I think these are really fun, um, you know, projects to watch. The randomness and the types of colors people are drawing is really fun to see. So anyway, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.